Good morning everyone and welcome to a new reading vlog. So for the past few days, few weeks, I have actually been trying to minimize my physical TBR which has gotten so bad while I was actually not reading when I was studying for the board exams. So anyway, actually I've gone through a lot of them already and I think I've read half of the books. Today's pick for my physical TBR tackling journey is Emma by Jane Austen. So yesterday I was actually watching Emma. Oh, Emma. I was actually watching Emmy Reed's Cozy Autumn book recommendations and one of her recommendations was actually Northanger Abbey, which is a gothic novel by Jane Austen if I understand correctly but i don't have that one and i prefer these what are these penguin english library classics these really cool ones and i don't have a copy of northanger abbey that is like this and i checked my local bookstore and they don't have the penguin english library classic edition of northanger abbey so i was like this is a sign from the gods that i shouldn't be <laughs> buying more books and starting more books that aren't in my physical tbr at the moment so i'm just gonna read emma and it's not a downgrade because i love emma emma is my favorite jane austen movie and i haven't watched a lot of jane austen movies but i know that emma's gonna be my forever favorite so i'm sorry to the pride and prejudice girlies you will not be able to convert me. I do not really love Pride and Prejudice. I understand the hype and how much of a cinematic masterpiece it is but I don't really like the story of Pride and Prejudice and I much prefer Emma. So Emma, if you guys don't know what this is about, Emma is one of Jane Austen's most imperfect heroines. It says it in the back and Basically, Emma is kind of like a very charming um, girl and she's obsessed with matchmaking. So just people in her community, she matchmakes them and basically she's very charming but she's also imperfect and she can be blind. Blind? To everyone's faults as well and so Emma is just such a refreshing movie to me it's a classic it's historical but it's not boring at all very funny it has a lot of just sarcastic notes to it and that's what I really love and what really entertained me when I watched Emma for like 50 times so I really hope that I love the book as well so I actually have not started the book I've loved the movie Emma for a long time now but I haven't started the book because you know when you love something so much and you think that something's gonna ruin it I was like maybe I won't like the book because I'm not really a classics reader I am very picky with my classics. I am very picky with the classics that I really absorb and understand because I feel like I'm just reading them for school. So far, the longest time I steered away from Emma, which I also told my cousin when we were in the bookstore and she was just like, just get it. You love the movie, you should just get it. So I got it and I will read it. Yeah. Also, if you're planning to buy these Penguin classic oh my god they never remember what they are if you're gonna buy these penguin english library editions just know that they are not floppy at all they're stiff as hell like can you see that emma and i say that's karma and i say that's emma's revenge for criticizing her book. In terms of other media, I've also been trying to watch One Piece just like every other person in the entire world right now but I am starting with the anime. So 
When I was a kid, One Piece has been on TV. If you're Filipino and you don't really subscribe to cable TV, I guess, you are going to be fed anime. It's like your cartoons or anime. And so One Piece was one of those cartoons. But I remember when I was a kid, I didn't really prefer One Piece because the art style is very strange. And the characters, they don't look as pretty as like Sailor Moon. And so... <laughs> I just preferred those things so when I was a kid I actually watched like Flame of Rekka, Hunter, Hunter, just the other ones, not One Piece. But I do know who the characters are because when you're scrolling through the TV scrolling, when you're, what do you call that? When you're flipping through the channels, obviously One Piece is gonna be one of them and if you're waiting for the show you're actually going to watch and One Piece is before that, you're not really gonna just change the channel that much. So I did watch a lot of One Piece episodes, just like snippets of it I guess. So I know the characters, I kind of know the story, I kind of know like Luffy's power, like the gum gum thing. But yeah, and the Filipino version I think has the same names as the Japanese one. So it's just Luffy and Nami and Zoro and Sanji. They're the same in the Filipino dubbed version. So anyway, probably gonna watch that because I am still in episode two, I believe. And so yeah, that's the plan for the day. And I actually finished my classes yesterday, so I'm free. I don't think the classes are available yet. It might be available. Anyway, I don't think the classes for the next lesson are available yet so yeah and the deadline for that is gonna be quite far ahead i think so it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine we're just gonna read emma and it's also perfect weather because it's not gloomy today and i was wanting to read this in like a spring summery kind of day we don't have seasons in the philippines we have rainy and hot <laughs> that's it <laughs> so Thank God it's not rainy today. But yeah. So, I didn't realize that Mr. Knightley was actually around 37 or 38 years old and he's the older brother of Isabella's husband. So Isabella is like Emma's sister and I didn't realize that in the movie and just the information you get when reading the original text. Amazing! So Emma was going on about how she had success in matching Miss Taylor and Mr. Wesson and freaking Mr. Knightley had to go hard for three paragraphs saying that how is that Emma's success she did nothing it was just a lucky guess and all she did was like say in her head that they would be a good match and she didn't do anything else and <laughs> he droned on for like three paragraphs he literally demolished 
Emma. Oh my god. the definition of that meme I can fix her because here she says that she would notice her she means Harriet she would improve her she would detach her from her bad acquaintance and introduce her into good society she would form her opinions and her manners it would be a, an interesting and certainly a very kind undertaking highly becoming her own situation in life her leisure and powers precisely the order of people with whom I feel I can have nothing to do. A degree or two lower might interest me. If they were very poor, I might hope to be useful to them in some way, but a farmer can need none of my help, and is therefore as much above my notice as he is below it.
Gracias. I hear that our next stage is ready, shall we?
Hello everyone, as you can see, I'm not at home, I'm in my cousin's room. So we were just seeing the wall because it's her room. Anyway, so I just went here because we went to the Twice concert. Me, her, and some of her friends, and it was just so much fun. It was so surreal. I cried, she was crying. It was all so fun. I've been reading Noragami Volume 2, I believe, and I am reading None of This is True. An audiobook the thriller book the thriller book so basically it's about these two families and the two girls or the two like wives are birthday twins so they're born on the same day and it's just so strange and i'm invested but i'm not saying that i'm so invested as to say that it's gonna be my favorite thriller like, I don't particularly mind it, but I don't particularly like it either. So I'll probably read that later when, while I'm traveling back to my home. So that's all the updates that I have. But yeah, Twice Concert was so much fun. And if you're on Instagram, if you're following me on Instagram, you probably already saw some videos and pictures. And it was just so fun. The lighting is kind of suspicious, but hello. <laughs> I'm also just watching Haley Fam now while I wait for my cousin.